Hello YouTube, this is Ebony again with PCOS Discussion and today we're going to talk about reproductive endocrinologists. So in the reproductive endocrinologist, also known as an RE, is a doctor, um, like I said before, that you know studies your hormone levels and see how it's affecting your fertility. They normally work alongside in OBGYN because REs do not typically deliver babies so um, they do do surgery sometimes but as in doing deliveries not typically so um, you may want to have your OBGYN refer you to an, to an RE or you can find an RE on your own either by searching the internet or going through some of um, medical journals to find some of the you know more reputable REs. I would take advantage of the free consultations that most of them offer. Um, some of them don't offer free consultations, so try to exhaust the ones that have the free consultations first so that you can get an overall idea of what they provide um, for you specifically because they're going to ask questions about your history and also um, if you like the atmosphere that they're in because you have to spend time there you know a lot of the time during your cycle there so you want to make sure you're comfortable there comfortable with the RE um, and comfortable with the services that they provide and also you want to make sure you know the costs that you know that they have because some insurances do not cover everything some insurance don't cover anything at all you want to also um, see if they provide any financial assistance any grants any um like um payment plans anything like that you want to see what they offer to you for your specific needs okay so what to expect during the first visit um during the consultation visit usually they will want to get a history of your fertility issue they will want to know the first menstrual cycle you had um the last menstrual cycle you had typically how long your cycles tend to be how often you have them through the year, um, how how heavy they are, how you know light they might be, how scanty, how um, how long they typically tend to last. So you will want to have that information on hand. Um, basically, what you might want to do, if you have been doing the basal body temperature of taking your temperature every day and charting it, you may want to print out those charts or if you've been doing it on paper, you may want to bring that along with you. I would possibly say bring about a year's worth of charts with you so that you can give to the RV so they can look those over. Okay. Um, also, you'll need to know some of your family history regarding uh, reproduction. So you may want to ask some of the women in your family on both sides, your mother and father's side of the family, what the history or problems they may have had um, trying to conceive or what other type of reproductive issues they may have had so that you can update the doctor on your family history. You'll need to know um, your sexual history, how many partners you've had, they may ask that, not all will, but um, if you have a current partner or so forth, because some people go there who don't have a partner, but you just want to know how your body is working, especially if you have PCOS. Um, typically, they will want to know if you've had any STDs, if you've had any surgeries and so forth. So they're going to ask those kind of questions. Make sure you know the dates and everything for those things, what you were treated with. And if possible, if you can get from your OBGYN, maybe a record um, of those things if it was the same OBGYN that was treating you for those issues. See if you can get a record from your OBGYN to take with you to the RE. Um, that way you're prepared for any questions that they may have. Okay? So during the first visit, that's basically what your RE will go through with you. Okay? Um, they will probably tell you to come back to them within... Oh, like you know on the first day of your menstrual cycle they will ask you to usually call in to schedule an appointment to come in for your third day of your menstrual cycle which will be chart day three you will need to come in so that they can draw blood work and also do ultrasounds of your uterine cavity and also of your ovaries and to check to see if there's any follicles that are now being stimulated to grow um, they're doing all of that and they're going to check the sizes and document it, probably print pictures to put in your file 
and they're going to do a series of blood work. You may have like six tubes of blood. Don't get freaked out, but that's pretty normal. Um, they're checking all of your hormone levels. That's in including your thyroid levels. That's including your estradiol, your um, luteinizing hormone, your follicle stimulating hormone. They're pretty much checking everything. They're also in that blood work, they're going to see if you have any of the clotting factors, which sometimes prevents women from getting pregnant or from sustaining a pregnancy. So what they're going to do is actually to come in maybe a few days later or up to 10 days later to see if there's any change in the diagnostics in the labs. And then from there, they're going to then know how to treat you. From there also, they want to know if you've ever been pregnant um, so that they or with that partner because they may also ask you to bring in a semen analysis of your partner or they may ask you to do a post-coital test. Post-coital test is when you have had sexual intercourse with your partner and you come in about 8 to 12 hours after um, sexual intercourse so that they can see how your body is reacting to the sperm. Some women have um, antibodies in their in their body that will fight sperm. Um, most people, you know, most women, your your body does that naturally. But some women, your body is very persistent with um, fighting the sperm, and that is what um, enables, like, makes it unable for you to get pregnant. So that's very important to know. Then they also have a, a three-hour postcodal test that they will do as well. Um, Another um, diagnostic test that they will do is an endometrial biopsy, which they normally, normally tend to do during your luteal phase. They will take a sample of your uterine tissue, and it, it sounds worse than it is, but you know, it's done right in the office. It's something that they can do. It's very quick. You'll feel a little bit of a cramp once they take the, the, the sample. You may have a little spotting, but that's it. It's, it's very simple and you know normally they get the results back within a couple of days. Um, that's basically to see how you know sufficient the lining is after you have ovulated to make sure that your lining is sufficient enough for implantation of an egg. They will also check to see if they see any abnormal cells so and then they will treat you accordingly. Now they also check, um, they do like a pap test to make sure that you ha don't have any STDs, that you don't have any cancerous cells, or they look for a specific bacteria also, like toxoplasmosis, urea plasma, or also um, T mycoplasma. Those um, bacterial growths can inhibit you from getting pregnant. Also, it can cause miscarriage, and sometimes it can cause some type of birth defects with your fetus. So. It's very important to know those things because that can also affect your fertility. Um, they will typically also do a laparoscopy, which is a pretty much they um, inflate your abdominal cavity and insert a a little small camera, microscopic camera, so that they can check to see if there's any scarring, any adhesions to your uterus, to your fallopian tube, or to your ovary and it gives them a good idea if there's anything that they can do. Sometimes they'll fix it right when they're, you know, looking in there. They have little microscopic um, um, instruments that they can go in there and fix it right away while they're there. There's also something called a hysteroscopy, which goes inside of the uterus through the cervix. Um, and there they can also do the same thing by going inside of the uterus and fixing what needs to be fixed if they see any fibroid tumors or any scarring or anything like that or if you have a blocked tube they can try to fix it if it's unfixable they will let you know that they they didn't try because if they do try it could lead to an ectopic pregnancy if you do you know happen to get pregnant um i'll go into that at another time though also they may want to do what's called a hysteral subpinogram or known as the HSG where they shoot dye inside of through the cervix and they use like a, a x-ray TV to place over your uterus just to see if the dye is flowing out of the fallopian tubes to make sure that your tubes aren't blocked and to see the shape of the uterus because if the fluids in there they pretty much get an idea of the shape of your uterus to see if it's shaped okay 
or if there's any issues with that or if your tubes if there's any issue with your tubes because if the dye is not coming out of the tubes they know that there's a blockage okay um also there's something similar called histo sorry hysterosonography or you, you know it pretty much is a sonogram of your you know of your uterus the fallopian tubes and the ovary and what they do is basically similar to HSG but instead of putting dye they put in saline solution pretty much like you know the visine that that clear um, salt like solution what they'll do is they'll fill your abdominal cavity with that they can see the flow but they use an ultrasound so there's no x-ray and pretty much it's doing the same thing it's checking the lining it's checking your uterus shape it's checking the if there's any blockages and they're looking at your ovaries and it gives them a very big picture of what's going on with you specifically so with all of these things um, they're pretty much checking to see how well your body is in achieving pregnancy and maintaining a pregnancy and it's very important that you get an overall picture because not everyone is the same so this makes it very individualized which is very important um, what they may also do is prescribe you medications and with those medications they will be monitoring you every few days you'll come in they'll be checking with ultrasounds checking your blood levels just to make sure that you're responding correctly and all of this information can be reported back to your OBGYN or you could just be working directly with the RE and if there's any changes or things that need to be made your OBGYN can then make the changes accordingly to your care but it is a good idea to have an RE because of, you know, everyone's specific issues that not everyone else will be experiencing. I think it's the best way to go, if, especially if you are trying to achieve pregnancy um, quickly and successfully. Okay? And um, I'm not sure if I mentioned clotting disorders, but clotting disorders is also another thing that the RE will check for. Clotting disorders will clot the blood when you do achieve pregnancy and it will prevent the, the pregnancy from progressing or it will progress to a, to a point and then you know you may miscarry so or you may lose the fetus the fetus may stop growing the, the fetus may die okay so all of these things are very important and sometimes when you are trying to achieve these things it can become very expensive and very frustrating so the sooner the better in knowing what is going on with your body is the best thing so that it can limit the time and the finance that it should cost you in having a child so if you have any further questions about an RE what to expect and and so forth please do not hesitate you can leave me a message below or you can send me an email I don't mind your questions. Um, it's a lot to digest, but make sure you educate yourself. Get some books. Like I said, the best book that I found was Getting Pregnant, What You Need to Know. This is the book. Okay. See if you can get that book. It's by Dr. Niles H. Laurison and Colette Boucher. I would definitely recommend that book. Um, a lot of what I've said is probably in this book. Yes, in fact, I remember it being there. Um, also, what you don't know, what they don't mention in the book, look it up on the internet. And you can always check back here. You can always ask me questions. Um, I've done a lot of research, as I've said. So if you have any questions, leave me a message, and I will let you know as much as I can. Okay, good luck, and I hope this has helped you today. Bye-bye. Take care.